What is a chronic disease? A chronic disease is one which has a longer duration and a slow progression. Some common examples of chronic diseases are heart disease, atherosclerosis, stroke, cancers and diabetes mellitus. More than 63% of the world's death is caused by chronic diseases. Let's see about the modifiable risk factors for chronic diseases. They are of four types, mainly lack of physical exercise, poor nutrition, increased alcohol consumption and increased tobacco usage. My topic of discussion for today is role of sports and exercise medicine in prevention and management of chronic diseases, the basic underlying mechanisms. The role of sports medicine. Sports medicine emphasizes on functional capacity rather than on diagnosis of the, of the disease. It also provides functional capacity assessment which is of greater importance. Sports medicine also takes precedence over areas like rehabilitative efforts with the help of a multidisciplinary and a holistic approach. The common domains of sports medicine are as follows. They are prevention, clinical education, immediate care, treatment, organization and counseling. Physical activity, exercise and health. Physical activity is the single most successful entity among nutrition, psychosocial intervention and therapeutic interventions. Physical activity by itself supports the other lifestyle modifications like reducing the alcohol consumption, reducing the tobacco usage, etc. The effect of physical activity on our body is, on, is basically of three types, primary, secondary and tertiary effects. The primary effect is to reduce the occurrence of the disease. The secondary effect is to minimize the effects of the disease in the body and the tertiary effect is to minimize the complications caused by the disease. The problem. Energy consumption per meal has not reduced since 1970, it has been the same. But the energy expenditure has drastically reduced per person. The penultimate problem is obesity, which is causing doubling of healthcare efforts. Attempts to address this disparity have been made in the form of mass media campaigns and physicians addressing of at-risk individuals. The Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development and the World Health Organization have come up with three interventions to help with this problem. They are regulatory and fiscal measures, primary care based interventions and health education and promotion. Impediments to health care are of five types and they are as follows. The reductionist approach, lack of sufficient clinical training, lack of sufficient distribution channels, disease and event based healthcare and behavioral change. The reductionist approach. The reductionist approach is simply breaking down a complex process into smaller and simpler ones so that the result becomes clear and simple. What once started out as a intuitive medicine has now become precision medicine. Though this reductionist approach has shown stupendous and marvelous improvement in its nature, what it ignores is health is basically a wide spectrum that ranges from complete wellness to multiple disease states. The main problem with the reductionist approach is that by the time the interventions are made, it becomes too late. Disease and even based health care. This is a simple extension of the reductionist approach. Nowadays, healthcare has become more disease specific. It is based more, more on the activities that are done rather than the results that are created. All this is because simply because of the fragmentation caused by the reductionist approach. Hence, what can be simply avoided by doing physical activity it gets blown up in size. Preventive and social medicine is not being taken care of as much as the other sciences, which is a major drawback nowadays.
Lack of distribution channels. The main distribution channel for healthcare is a physician. And most people do not meet a physician for more than five times a year. Most of the physicians nowadays are not trained in prevention and preventive medicines also. So when a person goes to a physician, all, all of the interventions that he is going to give is based on his lifestyle, which is not going to help the patient at all. Behavioral change. People nowadays prefer immediate effects to delayed ones even if the importance is greater. Only when a chronic disease shows its ugly consequences, people are motivated to change their behaviors. This is a serious impediment to health care. The solution to the problem that we have been discussing all this while is simply a patient-centric model. It has two criteria. The first one is technology and innovation and the second one is creation of a new profession. Using technology and innovation, close supervision, motivational monitoring and interventions can be done. Using computer generated interfaces, a lot more close monitoring can be done on the human body movement. High performance calculations can also be used to change the disease management from a reactive to a proactive type and uh, the telecommunications can be used as a mode of spread for technology and innovation. Creation of a new profession is a must. There is no profession that deals with chronic diseases or uh, lifestyle related diseases management. The larger medical sciences need to help the smaller ones to come up. A new profession has to be created which uh, deals with acute sports injuries, rehabilitation, in short, reductionism, which means fragmenting a complex problem into simpler ones, and holism, which means treating a problem as a single entity, have to come together and help in the prevention of chronic disease. The medium term goal will just be to prevent the chronic disease, but the Long-term goals will be the combination of reductionism and holism in prevention of chronic diseases. Role of sports medicine in preventive and public health. Prevention should be the preferred medium of approach rather than event-based medicine. The physician-patient relationship should improve. The two major advances in medical sciences were the adoption of hygiene and the development of curative and preventive surgeries. We are right now on the third advancement in medicine, which is the development in the workplace environment also. Sports medicine should transfer its vast knowledge and information to the general public and the population with the help of government bodies, epidemiological researches and institutions. A simple prevention agenda that can be easily attained. Highly talented physicians from all over the world should co come together and engage with this problem. A simple and a unified curriculum should be devised to train medical students. Using technology and innovation, all these problems have to be tackled. Sports federations and uh, multinational companies can come together to help with this problem. International meetings can be organized for the same. Thank you.